So we mentioned the public's observations, but I don't really think anybody <laughs> talked about what happened last night, which was kind of interesting in that they sold out a stadium for someone to just come out and wave at them in a T-shirt. But that, that to me, was the main takeaway from the Messi unveiling. Go, Jeremy, just rifle it off. Sounds like it was a messy situation. Mike, but we've seen this before. Remember Big Three? They came up from the seat or from the ground or whatever. Like they sold out the arena for that too. Like that was that was cool. Yeah, I mean there were that wasn't a full sellout. As someone I I went to that that Big Three intro and that was that was really cool. I decided against going to this one because I just thought it was all going to be. It was bad. pouring. Uh, no, because I'm a season ticket holder and I know that they haven't necessarily dealt with something like this. That many people GA seating. The parking situation isn't the same as it is for regular games. And I've seen unveilings before, and they're not fun. Usually a guy comes out in a full kit, kicks around a ball, and people clap, and it just seems all kind of stupid to me. And also, I sold those for $300. So, and then when you see the forecast, that 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 just, oh, I was, I was basically kicked back in my couch with a snifter laughing at the poor bastard that bought my seats. Make up for the money at the craps table, or? A little bit. A little bit, but it's going to take a few more messy games. So, <laughs> did you have any FOMO on seeing him no. introduce? What's the opposite of FOMO? Yeah. What's the opposite of like? I was oh, so happy I wasn't there. <laughs> oh God, I'm so Domo. glad I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. The like, drone Romo? shot. The, I know everyone talks about how small that stadium is. The drone shot was just like, oh wow, this is such a cute little stadium that he's yeah. playing in. They add, they added three thousand seats in one corner, seemingly overnight. Uh, pictured there, top right. They added that very quickly. But that's – I know everyone's going to take the opportunity. Sound wasn't working, and this is such a mess because of the rain and all that. Ultimately, the greatest player ever decided to come to Inner miami which plays right across from Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, and they packed the house just to see that ridiculous display. And it, for me, that was a cool takeaway. That and, oh, my God, how did this person pay $300 for these? <laughs> the takeaway for me – was uh, to really, really marvel at what a smart business decision this human being has made. And it will have its pressures and people will criticize the smallness of it. And maybe at some point he will regret the smallness of, what do you mean I'm the greatest player ever and I'm playing in Fort Lauderdale? Like, what do you, what, this is not what I'm used to. I'm, I go into everywhere. I'm a god amongst men. A hundred thousand people in every stadium I go to. Uh, as a business decision, to have won the World Cup, accomplished the last thing that you had to accomplish and saying, you know what, I'm going to take my brand to a quieter place and play games that matter less to build my future. Learning what, I mean, you see what Clutch Management and LeBron, you see what they're buying, right? They're, they're, LeBron is interested in having a stable of athletes work for him the rest of his career. Tom Brady is deciding whether he wants the $375 million or not from Fox because there are any number of ways that he can compete against LeBron for money because now they all want what Jordan has. Dwayne Wade is buying a WNBA team or getting in the mix on ownership in Utah because they all want to compete here now. No more as players. They so, want to compete as owners of their own stuff. It's so weird, all these really rich athletes tripping over themselves just for the opportunity to lose money year after year. It's, it's oh. odd. Messi choosing something this small when he's this big, it, it's absurd visually. And it's so smart if you just want, I've accomplished everything, peace of mind. Like, let me go play some soccer games that are fun and don't matter as much. And maybe I build the league or maybe I don't, but I'm going to partner with all these giant entities and I'm going to I'm gonna do a rocking chair. And maybe I'll be great also yeah. in this league that's lesser than in my late 30s. Yeah, I think out of all the, the variables at play, his greatness is probably the one thing that you can bank on because it's a pretty big gamble from everybody involved, including Messi, but he stands to gain the most from it. And if he does in, indeed ride the tide uh raise the tide with his performance and his his star power then everyone will get theirs too but the entire sport is behind a paywall pretty much right now and it's not one of the first top of mind streamers this is this is about getting casual fans right people want to see the spectacle of this is the casual fan really going to go through the 
the, uh, the the pomp and circumstance of getting Apple TV and signing up for MLS season pass. I don't know. You say it's not one of the top streamers, uh, but the way they spend and what they spend on very selectively. They are not doing what anyone else is doing in streaming. Here's a Michael J. Fox documentary, and it's amazing. Hey, look, Tom Hanks is here behind our paywall making a giant movie. Uh, the things they that- They had a, a best picture too uh, from two years ago that was exclusive behind the paywall. No, they make good choices. They're not these crazy volume shooters like they're out there in the game, but you're, are you gonna buy MLS season pass to watch Messi? What you're doing isn't quite fair because whether I do it or not is not what matters. A whole lot of people who wouldn't have done it are going to do it. Right, but you're not even a casual sports fan, Dan. You're a sports fan, and you're from Miami, and you know that this is a big deal. And I still don't think you're going to get MLS season pass. No, but I, I, I have Apple, and I won't get MLS season pass. That's not something that I uh, am going to do. But I also... Uh, don't watch any soccer that way. If I told you, this is the point that I'm trying to get at. If I told you Messi's debut is on ESPN, you'd tune in because you have that. But the the big the big bet here is: Will someone like Dan, who's not even a casual sports fan, who is readily admitting, yeah, if it were on TV and not behind a paywall, I'd check it out. Are they going to get no, those people? I, I think you're doing this wrong, though, because they're going to get internationally for sports, which is what all these streamers want. Sports, sports, internationally, it's going to be a monster. Like you're it's right. not like just indisputably all over the world. That's what Apple does. It ain't about America. Apple is. We've got more money than everybody. And it should be noted that Apple's MLS season pass does work in other countries. And the appeal is, for me, as someone that's going to Europe in a couple of weeks, I can follow the League's Cup from Greece on my iPhone, and it's not going to cost me extra. I can watch MLS in other countries with just one Mike, flat the, rate. The bet, the bet, however expensive Messi is, and Apple can afford any number of losses, the bet is – internationally Messi's going to make us a destination streaming service on one item like yeah. Tom Hanks can't do that with a movie no. Ted Lasso did it some because it got all the word of mouth but Messi is regularly going to be giving you programming internationally that people would have never checked out Apple at all all over the world are going to be not only doing that but as an added bonus you're doing in MLS, what Adam Silver and David Stern were trying to do with basketball 30 years ago, you're making soccer and everything more international by bringing it to America and saying, hey, America, we know that you don't totally buy in yet on soccer, but you know what we do know that America buys in? Here's the very best. You want to watch this? Because he's playing in something that's a sewer for soccer. And that's, I don't even mean it as, I don't you mean, mean the, it. the country. Yes, a sewer for soccer. Compared to where he's been. And a, mi and a minor league compared to where he's been. Yeah. That bet, to me, is such a smart one from all the players because what Messi is doing is saying, hey, Apple, you've got all the money in the world. Now we're partners. Yeah. You, I, and, you and me are building something. Henceforth. And, and it's soccer. <laughs> yeah, I, I see the business strategy in it, and I think just last week Apple finally met the threshold to begin revenue sharing with its partner in MLS because they hadn't done that pre messy And I wonder just how much of the international numbers is baked into whatever arrangement MLS has with Apple and Messi has with both those entities. But for me, as someone that loves a game, wants to see it continue to grow here in the States, I'm not thrilled at the notion of putting it exclusively behind a paywall. It's semi-exclusive because there's a couple of matches here and there that show up on network television. But to me, that's not how you actually grow the game. It's how you grow the financials, and their argument would be, well, if our financials are stronger, then the game will grow here and we'll be in a positive position with a lot of momentum headed into 2026. But I would rather get Dan to watch an MLS game because it's on a service he already has and tune in to see the atmosphere and see the world's greatest soccer player dominate in this league to a cartoonish degree. That's what I want. That's what I think grows the game. That. 
maybe Dan won't buy the MLS season pass this year. But he got his sampler, and next year, damn it, he really enjoyed what he watched, and he'll sign up for it next year. To me, that's the big gamble here, is putting it exclusively behind the paywall. I have my feelings about it. Chris Cody, if I want to get you as a subscriber to read my publication, The Athletic, The Washington Post, I would have said The New York Times, but they're not going to be doing this anymore. If I want you to be reading sports articles for my publication and subscribing to get behind a paywall, how many of them do I have to put in front of you with a headline before you say, I will indeed get this subscription from behind a paywall? You guys are making too much good stuff that I want to consistently read. How many of them do I have to put in front of you before Chris Cody buys a subscription to read? If it's a, a good thing, it, it's just one. Like The right thing, I'll, I'll, I'll buy I've done. I think I did it with the athletic. There was just some article. I was like, "Damn it, they finally got me." Give me the free admin from <laughs> from Metal. I put it in so Slack and like, they didn't respond. Yeah. So I was like, "Damn it." Uh, I I still haven't purchased an athletic subscription. But if you put the immaculate grid behind a paywall, I think I'd crack. Ooh, I'm yeah. skeptical, by the way. A lot of people are perfect at this immaculate grid. I think there's a lot of cheaters out there. I'm in group chats. Everyone's always perfect. It's like, show me your eight out of nine, then I'll believe you. Uh, Josh Appel, nine out of nine every day. I'm on to you. Just because you announce a baseball team, I'm on to you, Josh Appel. Josh Appel. Mike sure wakes me up because he gets it at nine o'clock local time. With it's usually a baseball player with the first name Red that I've just never heard of before. He loves this game, and Joe Buck. Didn't even hear about it. Hated Have you it. seen how good Jeff Passan is at this game? Got it in 12 seconds. Someone sh- Taylor showed me a clip. Jeff Pat, It is impressive. Crazy. It was wild. It was. I thought he cheated too. I think everyone cheats. Don't you think Kirchin would be better than Passan at it? No, I don't yeah. Know. But Passan was damn good. 12 <laughs> seconds. Dan, do you know a uh, a Dodger Ranger? Adrian Beltre. Yeah, contract here. Oh, but nice. the rarity score is way too high. I need someone more rare. 